Here, it's on right now. Give me that. I'll pick the program. You make the popcorn. Why would a demonic entity like popcorn? I particularly approve of your human tradition of mercilessly exploding these puny corn creatures and feasting on their popped remains. Remember, popcorn can feel pain. Hi everybody, I'm Harvey Media, and this is Harvey Media Reviews. Once again, I'm back to review another adventure of everybody's favorite purple-clad, Bible-toting, 80s sitcom dropout, Bible Man. To be honest, I wasn't quite truthful in my last video about why I had stopped doing Bible Man reviews. Well, not my last video, but the, the one before that. The last episode in chronological order, of the, it doesn't matter. The point is, I wasn't entirely truthful. What I said was, I wasn't going to review any more Bible Man episodes for a while because it was hard to get the footage. That was technically true. I didn't have DVD ripping software until fairly recently, so I didn't have the technology to review this particular episode unless someone uploaded it on YouTube. However, there was another reason. That being that, frankly, the early Bible Man episodes are a lot easier to make fun of than the later Bible Man episodes. Not because the later Bible Man episodes are uncomfortable or anything, it's just that, believe it or not, this is where the series got good. So please, come along with me while we dive into Bible Man and the fiendish works of Dr. Fear. Yeah, I actually own this one. Right off the bat, after the customary quotation of the origin story, we have a brand new theme song for Bible Man. Put on the full armor of God! This is the theme song that will remain throughout the rest of the run of the Bible Man adventure, or as it would become known retroactively later, Bible Man Genesis. What was Bible Man Old Testament 2 on the nose for you, Tommy Nelson? Our story opens with Miles Peterson and Coates setting up for an anti-drug rally that is supposed to take place the following day. Miles shows Coates that, as part of the Clean is Cool campaign, two purple and yellow buttons have been made to be given to Bible Man and a young man, Kurt, the star player of the local basketball team, as they are the leaders of the Clean is Cool campaign. However, our dastardly villain now makes his entrance. <laughs> yes, but these will work better. You remember in the Shadow of Doubt review I mentioned that Luxor Spondroth changes his supervillain identity in every episode following Shadow of Doubt. This is his first self-reinvention, as Ludacris explains. Uh, do you remember this guy? He used to be, like, a different villain, but wasn't really good as a bad guy. So, <laughs> he's gotta do it all over. <laughs> I've simply graduated to a higher degree of evil. Just call me... Dr. V. <laughs> By the way, does anyone else think the ludicrous looks different? Just me? Okay, we'll move on. This is one of my favorite incarnations, as I really like the voice modulation and the fact that he switched up the way that he moves. If I had anything to nitpick about this design, it's that it doesn't really make sense within the context of the episode and the episode that preceded it. After all, at the end of Shadow of Doubt, Luxor got away scot-free. Why would he then need cyborg enhancements? It would make a lot more sense if this episode took place after the following episode, The Master of Misery, or any other Luxor Spondroth episode. Almost every other episode that Luxor Spondroth appears in, he is killed at the end of. Spoilers. So, 
it would make more sense for him to come back as a cyborg after being killed one of those times as this sort of hand wave away explanation for why he's still around, like Frieza in Dragon Ball Z. Maybe Ludacris is right, maybe Lex Respondroth got really depressed off screen after he failed in his duties as the Shadow of Doubt and decided to reinvent himself as a cyborg, or maybe his evil demonic masters tortured him for his failure and that's why he's now a cyborg. And in case you think I'm being sarcastic talking about his satanic overlords, just wait and see. Anyway, we now cut to the Clean is Cool campaign itself, which as part of the campaign is performing one of the worst anti-drug songs. No, one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. Close to me, there's a lot of cats want you to stay around. Keep it up, there's a hole in the ground. Be in line. I said be in line. One, what is wrong with the backup singers? It sounds like they're in another room. Did someone forget to mic them and put them on helium? Second, swing dance music? Swing dance music, really? You couldn't get a rock group or a, a rap song or... You're making that Flintstones Jr. show look good by comparison. Anyway, it's time for the two leaders of the Clean Cool campaign to come up and make their speech, and I'm sorry, I'm just so amused by the fact that even though the principal has to adjust the mic so that Kurt can speak, no one has to adjust the mic back for Bible Man to speak. So cute, he's sitting there, and they don't have any purple superhero. Kurt, Principal Rooney, my fellow citizens of Shotsville. Shotsville? Thank you all for coming. Good night. And now, everyone, please join me in Shotville's town song. Shot, 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 Everybody! But little do they know that Luxor, Spondroth, and Ludacris are actually spying on everything that they do. It's now time to introduce you all to another new mainstay character of the show, Lucy, the link to underhanded computer influences. Or Lucy for short. And for your information, doofacus. I am only a digital link, whereas you are the missing link. You think you're so smart, dude? My name's not Doofacus. It's ludicrous. Lucy is essentially Eunice's opposite number in the show, so much so that she's voiced by the same actress, Malo Upton. Voices well, Eunice, same actress who played the Gossip Queen and former wife of Willie Ames. When are we going to get to that elephant in the room? This doubting Thomas thinks your panic button won't work. Did anybody notice that Lex Respondroth just made a biblical reference? Shouldn't he, like, set himself on fire for doing that? But now it's time for Lex Respondroth and Ludacris to check in with their bosses. Dirt. Dirt are a band of demons. We don't learn very much about them, except that what their names are, demons inventing rotten tricks. They seem to be kind of a mixture between M and Q from the James Bond movies. They are in charge of everything that Luxor Spondroth does, and they also seem to supply him with his weapons and tactics. This is their only appearance in the show because they're actually played by a Christian musical group called the OC Supertones. Check, check, check! Turn the track up! A little louder now! So it was really cool for me, who had been kind of a casual fan of them outside of the show, to see them show up in Bible Man. But of course, unfortunately, they couldn't afford to keep them for too long, and so they're only here for this episode. As far as I know, though, this is the only time we see Lex or Spondroth directly reporting to someone, so it's probably easy enough to say that he only works for dirt for the remainder of the run. So we now cut back to the Bible Cave to introduce us to Coates' new weapon of choice. Want to check it out? Sure. Impressive. Most impressive. So Bible Man is getting ready. Damn. I got pretty in between edits. Anyway, Bible Man is scheduled to appear on a local talk show. So he goes in for another series first, the full armor sequence. From this point onward in the show, Bible Man has a special Bible chamber, which he gets into and morphs into his Bible Man armor. Also, I don't think I've mentioned Bible Man's new costume yet. In my opinion, this is one of Bible Man's best, if not my absolute favorite version of his costume. Yes, the bright blue in parts of his costume is a little bit distracting, but I just love that cowl. 
the whole serious Batman face he's got going, and the cape, and the chest with the way the colors bleed into each other. I'm just a big fan. Although it becomes really obvious over time that they have multiple versions of the costume for different scenes and locations. And another series mainstay, the tunnel bike. We finally learn how Bible Man gets around town. Apparently he doesn't teleport like it was implied that he did in earlier episodes. He has a motorcycle that he drives in tunnels underneath the city, which, given the amount of sinkholes have been opening up recently, probably terrible for Schottsville's infrastructure. Thanks, Bible Man. So Bible Man goes years on the worst talk show ever. Welcome to Kids Speak, exploring issues from a kid's point of view. Hi, I'm Cindy Chavez, and today my guest is Bible Man. He's here today to talk about clean is cool. But what if your friends think drugs are cool? Anyway, it turns out that unbeknownst to Bible Man and Kurt, clean is cool buttons that they as the leaders of the campaign wear are actually secret fear devices activated by a remote controlled by Dr. Fear. And he uses it to give Bible Man a little case of stage fright. Thankfully, Bible Man has friends in high places. He will put his words in my mouth. And the shadow of his hand will go. What's wrong with this? Transmission failure? What the devil? Nothing's broken. Those Bible verses ruin the reception. Yep, Bible Man's prayers interrupt the transmission and foil Lux Respondroth's evil plan. Okay, true story, when I used to go to Sunday school as a kid, there were these VCR players that they would use to show us these uh, teen Christian videos to, you know, teach us about God and stuff like that. And there, the Sunday school teachers were generally a lot of older women and so this old woman was trying to figure out this VCR and of course she couldn't she couldn't figure out the VCR and she stood stopped in the middle of class and held the VC VHS tape and said Lord there's an evil presence that doesn't want us to watch this tape but we know that you want us to watch this tape and you won't let them make the VCR not work and I was just sitting there like oh my gosh uh, Sunday school memories so without being able to attack Bible Man any longer Dr. Fear turns his eyes towards Kurt and starts affecting him with the fear laser instead one thing that I have to say about this episode is that it shows the effects of fear really really well it's just very smartly Done. Fear is often a kind of mental inhibitor that keeps people from being able to act. In this sequence, Kurt is a very good basketball player. We've been told that he is, and we see him making baskets. However, once he's hit with the fear, he starts to miss baskets. He loses his confidence and therefore starts to mess up. And eventually, towards the episode, he starts even getting afraid to say that he's afraid. Over the course of the episode, both he and Bible Man spiral into fear in a way that is very relatable for everybody. They start with being afraid and lose confidence, then they're afraid of their friends finding out that they're afraid. They get belligerent and angry when people try and tell them that they're better than they think they are because they're afraid of being let down. They're afraid of letting themselves down. This is what I mean when I say that this episode is where Bible Man really starts to get really strong stuff. The lesson that is shown in this episode is one that is very important to know. The part of the story that's not as well executed is the whole anti-drugs thing. Regardless of whether you liked the song or hated the song. We know that Dr. Fear is doing this mission because he was told to by demons. Whether or not he's a demon is something we'll discuss later. But why are drugs so important to the devil? I know, don't do drugs and all that, and yeah, drugs can be very detrimental to your health. But A, they don't talk about, like, what drugs they're talking about. Like, are there different drugs that the devil likes better or not? Is marijuana the devil's tool? Is cocaine the devil's tool? Are they just all the devil's tool? Is Advil the devil's tool? I can to hurt myself with that just as easily as I can hurt myself with the other stuff. What if I have a prescription for the drug? Is it not the devil's tool then? Does the devil, like, just want people to get high because it will turn them away from God? Or does he want to start worshipping Snowflame? Is that what's going on? Personally, I think the dirt came to Luxor Spondroth and said, Hey, we want you to use a fear thing, start spreading the devil's gospel among the people or whatever. And Luxor was like, Okay, I want to start with these two people. And they're like, Okay, anybody's good for us, and that's Bible Man. He's given us trouble in the past. Let's start with them. But what they don't know is the reason why he chose those people is because they run the Clean is Cool campaign, and Luxor Spondroth is actually not a demon, but a human who is a drug smuggler. Yeah, it's a lame explanation, but it's the only explanation I got. And given what's going to happen in future episodes, 
It's not that far off. Anyway, with all the fear lasers going around, Bible Man thinks that something's up, and so he tracks down Dr. Fear to the basketball court, and they have a good old-fashioned smackdown. Hey, didn't you used to be another villain? Yes, but I'm trying something. <laughs> For a guy who just reinvented himself, you sure don't fight any better. Hey, you used to be on other shows, and no one's making fun of you. That's because those shows were networked. This is home video. Uh -oh. Proverbs 3.26 says that the Lord is my confidence, and I'm confident I can take care of you. Not my bag, baby. But the game's just beginning. However, right after the fight scene, we sm hit smack dab into another annoying bit of from this era, the Bible log. In the middle of these episodes, at approximately 20 minutes into the 40-minute episode, the action just completely stops, and Eunice comes up and tells us exactly what we've already seen happen in the past couple of minutes. I mean, it's the middle of the episode, we've been watching it so far, we've been paying attention, we know what's up. Why did they feel the need to refresh our memory at this point? Were these originally supposed to be two 20-minute episodes, it was in a two-parter? I mean, was every episode supposed to be, was, was it supposed to be like classic Doctor Who and everything was a two-part serial, or four parts in one instance? I don't know, it's not a big thing, but it's just it kind of irritating when you're watching it and the action just stops. Anyway, Kurt is practicing his basketball shots, trying to get over the cloud of fear that is surrounded. <laughs> hey, Kurt. Oh, Bible Man, it's you. Yeah, it's me. How's it going? I'm quitting the team. I can't do anything right. The big game's tomorrow, and I'm gonna blow it. Now, come on, Kurt, calm down. I think that you're being attacked by fear. And I'm not surprised because you're a leader. And the enemy wants to stop you. But you don't have to listen to him. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13 that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. What do you say? Why don't you give it another try? Okay. Holy crap, where'd you guys come from? Seriously, he was in a completely empty gym before. Did they all just climb out of the nether sphere? Was Kurt's failure as a human being so palpable that it ripped open a hole in space time and brought his team through so that they could watch him and his embarrassment could be complete? Close the embarrassment loop! Close the embarrassment loop! I just came by to encourage you. I'll see if I can catch you. To continue to compliment this show for a second, I gotta say that it's really cool that this show has moved away from some of the sillier elements of the Shadow of Doubt and has started to become a much more serious... Yo quiero taco smell. Welcome, my brother. Never mind. Bible Man's fear causes him to falter and is therefore defeated. But that doesn't stop Coates from being freaking awesome. Again. Bible Man? Kurt! Dead! Coach, look out! The Bible says, do not fear, for God is with you. You can't handle the power of God. Like a boss! I'll deal with you later. Kiss, kiss. That was too close. Are you okay? No, I'm not. No, we should just keep Crawling in my spandex. He said his worst fear came true, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. His journal. His deepest fears. Letting me down. Show me the nightmare, Eunice. Glad you saw the movie. Scanning. Miles, don't you let me go, man! So Eunice squealed on me, huh? He made me. Coates, I've always been afraid that you'd get into a jam and I wouldn't be able to save you. Eunice, access Bible Man History Quiz. 
Now, what famous fisherman let God down not once, but three times? Hint. His mouth was bigger than his net. Peter. Yeah, it wouldn't be Bible Man if we didn't dumb something down. But now we come to another kind of weird part of this era of the show, the scientific explanation. You see, in this version of the show, what the villains do to our main characters is not actually a metaphor. I mean, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. It's a metaphor, but only for the audience. In-universe, it's not a metaphor. It's not just them having magical, evil powers. There's an actual modus operandi and a reason why everything works. Like I said, the fear laser can only affect people who are wearing the cleanest cool badges. And now we have Bible Man Code scientifically explaining to us how the fear laser actually works on your nervous system and stuff. I knew it. These are composite digital sub-frequency receivers. They must be emitting fields of panic signals being transmitted by that fear character. And those panic signals are magnified by our own inherent fears. The signals will also cause you to sweat, further heightening your fear since water is an excellent electrical conductor. Water and salt, the ingredients of sweat. Yet, that exploding shark was pulling my leg. I mean, I get that this is a trope for superhero shows, but why is this necessary? It's Bible Man. The entire reason why he's been fighting them so far is because they work for the devil and they're making people scared. It's not like every time I'm scared there's a villain out there who has a button attached to a machine that just makes me afraid in different situations. I just feel fear. It happens. And if it is a chemical weapon, shouldn't they be developing an antidote, not just trying to teach people a lesson about controlling their fear? Obviously their fear centers are being artificially stimulated. So why would learning how to control your fear help? You need some drugs. Oh, that's right. Drugs are the devil's tools. Ugh. Got me again. So then they go to Kurt and explain to him how about he needs to control his fear, but let's be real for a second. The wrap-up with the problem child of the week is always the least interesting part of the episode. We've already seen Bible Man learn his lesson, and he's just reiterating the same information to the kid. Now it's time for the best part of the episode, Bible Man kicking ass. That's what your side always wants us to believe. But Psalm 27.1 says that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Oh, will my craving of spiritually themed violence ever be sated? We'll get to you. Isn't the championship basketball game supposed to be happening right now? In the gym? And they're fighting in the gym? Is the basketball game happening just off screen and everyone's just ignoring the superhero fight in the corner? Oh, uh, those don't work on us anymore. But they will work on you. Your fears will always come back to haunt you. Right back at you, fear dude, with a little help from 1 John 4.18. Perfect, Perfect love casts out fear. Thank you. Wait, that shouldn't work. They're not wearing the badges. Oh well. Let's respond. Roth is disintegrated by a remote control signal. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's actually using it to teleport away and it's all a trick. I don't know. And once again, the day is saved thanks to Bible Man and Coats. Like I said at the beginning, this episode rocks. Even though the Shadow of Doubt made great moves towards quality, this is, in my opinion, the first real episode of what would make up the peak era of the Bible Man Adventure show. Reading the Bible does not suddenly cure you of ever having to deal with a problem again in your life. You're always going to have problems. You're always going to have struggles. Even the Bible itself says that. What Bible Man is arguing here is that the Bible itself has lessons in it that can be applied to those struggles that you will encounter in your life. As opposed to just preaching at the audience and at the kids saying, just read the Bible. The Bible has answers. It actually demonstrates an answer that the Bible could have to a question. He's solving problems, and he's citing his sources. Now, of course, there are going to be a lot of different opinions on this. Some people think that Bible Man is not worth anything at all, and is only worth ridicule. And, to be fair, there's a lot of really silly, stupid stuff in the show, 
It's still here in this episode and it will continue onwards. I've already mentioned in past episodes and in this one a little bit about the confusing theology surrounding the premise of the show. In terms of what Bible Man sets out to do and the potential that the Bible Man concept has, this is the beginning of the era, era where the potential for the concept gets really fully explored for the first time, and potentially for the last time. But before we get to that, there are still several episodes of the show left, and honestly, now that I'm back, I can't wait to share the rest of them with you. I don't know how long it's going to be before the next Bible Man review, because I have a lot of other exciting stuff planned for the next couple weeks, but you can be sure we'll be coming back to this show once again. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and share this video on all of your social media platforms. I'm Harvey Media, and I'll see you all later. Coming to you straight from LP number five. This is the Super Toes. This is the Super Toes. Everybody, please report. Please report to your radio. Please turn the volume up. Rock this one for me right now. All right. We came with James and Tripp and I. I've got some rhymes spitting. I beat some moves, your feet and hips and I. Jesus and these lyrics now. We haven't stayed here all these years to be no superstar. Chinese screams.